this question, you see the first thing that we have to understand the matter. When I said matter is inert, it means there is no consciousness in it. Without the consciousness, I cannot know. The matter cannot know itself, and matter cannot know others. Now, add one spice into it. Matter plus life. So when you add a life, the rudimentary life is like amoeba, unicellular organism. Huh? Then, in that life, grow, grew, and ultimately, we have plant kingdom. So understand. First, lowest level of evolution starts from the matter. Matter has existence. Matter plus life means plant kingdom. Now there are some plants which have consciousness. How do you know that? When you approach them or touch them, they squeeze themselves. They show some sensation. Noble laureate from India, who discovered that plants also have a consciousness. Long back, I think perhaps in 1918 or 20. Now, evolution continued. So understand, the lowest level matter. It has existence. Plants, they have existence plus life. Okay, now, now. The third level. Where is the third level? Animals. So that is how we start talking of animal consciousness. So can you figure out what do you mean by animal consciousness? Ahara, Nidra, Mathun, Bhayam. So we talk about four basic instincts of animals. Huh? Need for safety, need to sleep, need for food, and for self-preservation or sexual pleasure. Are you with me, Vini? I am, yes. Yes. So, <coughs> lowest level matter. Second level, evolution, matter plus life, plant kingdom. Third level, matter plus life plus consciousness, animal kingdom. Now, matter plus life plus consciousness. Should I add plus self-consciousness, human being? So, you got the answer? Human being have self-consciousness. Animals do not have it. Say, for example, if the tiger has the self-consciousness, then they will see you and they will tell, oh, Whitney seems to be very tasty. I have to reorganize and I have to put her into... Then you can complete the sentence. So what is the simple answer? We have the intellect that has a... Ability to observe, make a choice, and control. Even plants have the consciousness. They do not have the necessary instruments. Animals have the consciousness. They do not have the intellect. To, they, have an int they observe. But they do not have an intellect to make a choice and to control. Did you get the answer? I think so. I'm working on this other part too. Think so then to it again. Matters. You see the lowest level. Let me yeah. complete the entire yoga with this. Lowest level matter, material kingdom. We say in yoga sat. In English, we say existence. Clear? Now the evolution continued. You add a 
life into it. No, you didn't add, but existence added. So matter plus life is and kingdom, right? Now the third level. Third level, matter plus life plus consciousness. This consciousness is equal to animal kingdom. Why? That is why we say animal kingdom, animal consciousness, four basic instincts. Huh? The tiger do not have a choice to become completely vegetarian until we force them. Why they rise? They don't have any intellect. They don't. They are not self-conscious being. We are self-conscious being. You know, that is why I say I'm a complete vegan. What you have were eating before? I was a cannibal before. No, no, I'm just giving an example. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then, okay, so I got that, and that's kind of what I thought was that you have to know that you're suffering and yeah, be able yes, to make choices to overcome very, that. So that's yeah, that's that what I very yes, yeah, that very self consciousness is absent. Okay, that's what I thought. Another so way then, to answer it. Another so way to answer it. You, how do you open your computer? Computer, you switch on the button and the window appears and then you connect to me. You don't you don't do any hard work to connect to me. You simply click. Computer opens. You click again and we are in a virtual session. Why we say? Because it is programmed in the computer. Did you understand it? Yes. Now Animal consciousness is programmed by the nature. They do not have a choice because intellect is not there. So then my other part of my question, because you were talking about mind is working yeah. on you, or you're working on the mind. So then obviously we're in the physical body. So then um, I guess, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to word the question, but would you say then that, you know, if we've reached, I guess, if we've reached the ultimate enlightenment and like the ultimate taming of our mind, we wouldn't be held back by physical limitations for like sleep and food and chemical imbalance and things like that. You're talking about, you know, oh, if you're, um, you know, if you're tired while we're talking, that's the mind controlling you. Right. So so then what you were saying then would be that, you know, if we ultimately had complete control of our mind, we wouldn't be afflicted by physical needs. Is that accurate or no? Uh, two part answer. First part, the body is a matter, so it should follow the laws of matter. First part. But if it doesn't follow the laws of a matter because the mind is ruling the matter, uh, when the mind is ruling the matter because of identification and attachment. So yoga says, tell the mind, don't misuse the body. So when you don't misuse the body, then what happens? The body works with the material laws governing them in the best possible way. Having said that, when I say that this body follows the material law, it does not mean that you don't need food. But then the mind makes a right choice because now the mind is pure. The mind doesn't make a choice based on its attachment and clinging, but mind makes a right choice what is the best for the body? Okay. Thank you. You got it? Yes. Ah, and, there are a lot of things. That's the good questions coming up. So let us continue our journey of <laughs> Yoga Sutra. Yes, you are free to ask Yoga Sutra commentator. I have I was discussing about Vyasa. Vyasa has written all the principles, all the sutras. And you see the beauty, you know, say, you know, if two people, you know, 
if I become the best-selling author, and then the John says, how I should compete you? But that was not the case in the ancient times with our masters. Vyasa wrote all the principles, including what is written in the Yoga Sutra. And when Patanjali Yoga Sutra was written by the Patanjali, Vyasa said, wow, you have written only 195 formulas that covers everything of yoga, which is scattered in more than 3,000 texts. You have done a marvelous work. So Vyasa then was inspired, no, no, I have to write a commentary to make common people clear how Patanjali Yoga Sutra uh, compressed all the entire knowledge of yoga, meditation, liberation, freedom, cause of suffering, mind, functional aspects of the mind, and a long list. So for two reasons, we must study the commentary by Vyasa, because he, in fact, is the originator. And then he praised and appreciated the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, and then he gave the commentary. Do you see the beauty? So it means our intellect should be used to understand what Vyasa has commented on it, rather than we should find our own meaning. Right? So this Vyasa was the great masters. Whether you say it is 195 or 196, you know, we have some manuscripts found earlier, maybe seven or 800 years back. There are uh, some manuscripts contains 196 sutras. And normally we say it contains uh, 195. 95 sutras. Did I cover? There are four chapters of freedom. Huh? We discussed before there are four chapters of the freedom. The first chapter is known as Samadhi Pada. Pada means chapter. Samadhi means highest state of mind meditation. So he did not beat about the bush here and there. No, no, let me let me guide you first, Asana. You know, a lot of people say. No, I have been practicing asana for how long? 15 years. Why? To prepare myself for meditation. Does that make sense? I have been practicing asana for 15 years. Why I am doing? I am preparing myself for meditation. No, I am totally obsessed, identifies with my body. And yoga says, de-identify yourself with the body is the way of yoga. It doesn't mean that you are not practicing asana. You are doing it, but there is no identification. So the first chapter covers all about mind, how to enter into the meditation, what exactly is the meditation, how to become a seeker, what exactly is the real self, how you progress into meditation, what are the obstacles and hindrances in the path of the meditation? First chapter. First chapter. The second chapter. Second chapter explains, I told you, Kriya Yoga and eight-limbed path. Kriya Yoga, how many limbs? Only three. Tapaswadhyaya Ishwar Pranidhanani Kriya Yoga. I'm completing, as I, I have already written a textbook or commentary on the Yoga Sutra, but I'm redrafting and editing it. So it will be available maybe after two or three months. Not to become a bestseller. I'm writing for myself, my own satisfaction. <laughs> so, second chapter, as I explained to you, it covers the two different approaches of yoga. So it means Patanjali explains the three different approaches to yoga. First chapter 
come on, start with the highest level of yoga. Second, you have a lot of challenges with your mind, emotions. Whitney, I'm answering that question in a different way. So you have a lot of challenges, do Kriya Yoga first, and then go into meditation. Remove all the kleshas, suffering. No, I don't understand what you are saying. Start with yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyan, samadhi. <coughs> I want to give an, another answer by asking a question. Why it is so that there are 50 students of one teacher, one student succeeds instantly in meditation, Second finds little calmness and relaxation, and the other do not find any result. Because they who do not find any result, they have to follow the eight limbed path. Those who succeeded a little bit, they have to understand Kriya Yoga, and those who succeeded, they are. Uh, understanding the first chapter, the first pada. Did you get it? <coughs> so the third chapter explains, Bethany, for you specifically, what are the extraordinary changes takes place in the mind by regular practice of yoga. And how to bring about extraordinary changes in the mind by doing a specific practice of meditation. Third chapter. And the fourth chapter, more or less, it covers what exactly is awakening, what exactly is nirvana, what is moksha, means enlightenment, what it is. How these seekers who achieve that state and how they live, how they talk, how they work. Whitney, are you listening? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, your previous questions are answered. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so you see that, so we are Sutra. I have covered a lot on Sutra, so let me... Uh, the uh, first chapter contains 51 Sutras. First chapter contains 51 Sutras. Uh, let me, uh, and pay attention every time, even if I miss this process, tell me, you are missing this process, explain it again. So Patanjali, I don't remember the number of, name of this, number of the sutra, and uh, once I remember, I'll tell you, but he explains, <coughs> Shabd Arth Jnana, he says, Shabda means word, in the sutra, earth means meaning, and jnana means knowledge. So he says, you have to understand, first you have to know how to recite this sutra. Means singing and the listening, those words should vibes in your ears. Word. Second, we should know the meaning. But third, we should know what is that knowledge hidden in that Yoga Sutra. How beautiful. How beautiful. I translate the entire, because, you know, it's a little deeper. I translate that into five I. First is information. Second is inspiration. Third is interaction. 
Fourth is the implementation means practice. Fifth is the insight. When you practice meditation, then you get a deeper insight. Oh, this is it. Insight is non-verbal communication of mind. Why it is non-verbal? At a higher state of the consciousness, uh, the mind doesn't move with the words and the thoughts and thinking. It works with directly with the higher consciousness. You get a glimpse, you get a flash, you get an insight. Grish, will you please repeat those five? Information, inspiration, interaction, implementation, insight. Thank That's you. how I take it. So, well, it's in a modern way. Process is the same, but you know, I'm just giving the modern way. And even if you teach others, that will make a sense to them. Because, you know, the old Sanskrit words and the phrases uh, may not make a sense. Clear. So, let us move <laughs> further with. Tivan Sutra's interaction, the seeker. Yes, that also. J. Krishnamurti. Do you are you aware of J. Krishnamurti? You know, a lot of these uh, so-called teachers who teaches a uh, choice awareness. Ah, uh, what they teach, you know, something what you know. No, here and now, what is that? Here and now. So all uh, they have, they are the, uh, I would say they might have read J. Krishnamurti, who teaches about choiceless awareness. But he made one uh, big. Ah, yes, yes. J. Krishnamurti was one of the great teachers. And when he reached to the, state of enlightenment, uh, then he rejected the authority of yoga because he realized if I, if he says to himself that if I talk about yoga, people will continue to misunderstand. So he never came down from his level of enlightenment. And he always talked of the choiceless awareness. So he made one sent. He made one. Uh, he spoke one thing. Once you reach to the enlightenment, then you always walk alone. Now, do you misunderstand this phrase? Walk alone. You are living in the material world with people, with relations, with everyone, but internally, nothing touches you. How it is possible? You stand before the mirror and get out of the mirror. Does the mirror keeps your impression, keeps your image, keeps the weight of your body? <laughs> Are you understanding? You stand before the mirror. You see your image. Clear? Huh? Randy, do you see the weight, your weight of the body in the mirror? What? Do you see the weight also in the mirror? Mirror does not carry any weight, any size, any color. You get out of the, out of sight of the mirror, mirror says, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I reach to that state of the mind? Whitney, can you reach to that state of the mind? One way to understand what exactly is enlightenment. You are working with everything as it is. No worries. 
but the quality of your thought, your speech, your action changes. Huh? So we say it brings an uh, it brings an end to the suffering. Uh, we'll talk, continue to talk about it. So before going to uh, again the sutra, we should understand a couple of more things, the basics. Uh, traditionally, in all uh, in all uh, uh, he or she is also listening from me Yoga Sutra, perhaps he will he will also got enlightenment. So so <laughs> we don't say philosophy huh? as it is known as philosophy. We use the word darshan. Darshan. What is that darshan means? Darshan means right perception. Darshan. Not philosophy. Yes, darshan, or we may write it uh, like this, darshan. Uh, that would be appropriate, darshan. Why darshan? Darshan, another meaning of the darshan is to make you understand knowing self by self. Now, remember and recall, sense organs are the instruments of knowledge to know the material world. Mind is an instrument of knowledge to know the phenomena of the material world where the science and its knowledge comes. And then what I said before, Eastern wisdom is an instrument of knowledge to transcend the mind, to know the self. So what is Darshan? Knowing the self by the self, knowing your real self by the self, not by the sense organs in the mind. That is what is known as darshan. Now, what is philosophy? It is the love of logic, love of reason, love of intellect. So, entire philosophical knowledge in the Western world huh, comes from intellect darshan comes from what is beyond intellect that is why we use the word darshan so yog darshan we say yog darshan we don't say yog philosophy are you getting it darshan darshan When you close all your sense organs, is it possible to know that you are here? Even if you close your eyes, you know you are here. You feel that presence, isn't it? So we don't need sense organs to know I am. Are you clear? Even if you don't say any word, you don't speak any word through the mind, still you know you are. Isn't it? Still, you know, you are. That you are is the real self. This that you is the journey of yoga. So here we, we go opposite to a great philosopher who said, I think, therefore I am. It is a silly and a crazy statement. Because the entire philosophy in the West is based on the intellect. So in that reference, he is right. I think. First I have to think, then I am. No. First I am, then I think. Isn't it? 
So, Whitney, you have to find without thinking, is there I am or not? Then you will understand the difference between uh, the working of consciousness in the animal and the human. So, when we say darshan, you understand that? Now, darshan and understand it is a right perception, one, and it is a direct perception. I'm summarizing all the in a different uh, in the first two or three sessions, and then we will pick up sutra by sutra so that you have a very strong background to understand. Now, another meaning of darshan it is experiential. What, what does it mean by direct perception? I'm seeing you, John. Is it direct perception? I'm seeing you, Brandy. Is it direct perception? No. My sense organs, mind going through the sense organ, have an indirect perception of you because a sense organ have come in between. Are you getting it? And the mind has come in between. Now get rid of the sense organ, get rid of the mind. Consciousness will remain there. And that consciousness, when it sees brandy, the brandy becomes me. I become brandy. I become Lara. Lara becomes me. Kate becomes me. It is does not become me. I see there is only one consciousness pervading everywhere. Are you getting it? Brandy, name, form, gender. Who perceives it? Sense organ. Who understands its mind? Now there is no sense organ, there is no mind, but still consciousness is there. But then there is no difference between consciousness here and there. There is no time, there is no place, there is no location. Is that the meaning of transcending the mind? Yes. Don't take it philosophically. Don't make it that it will come after 10 years of practice of meditation. It is already here and now. Am I a seeker? I'm crazy. So I'm making your mind also crazy to go deeper. See that? This is the real meaning of darshan. So now you understand the philosophy and darshan. We have yoga darshan, we have sankhya darshan, we have sankhya darshan. Sankhya darshan, you can claim it jnana yoga, the path of knowledge of yoga. We have bhakti darshan, we have knowledge of uh, yoga of love. Bhakti darshan, yoga of knowledge, uh, sankh yoga, or we sometimes say uttar mimansa. Are you getting it? That is the biggest difference, and once we do not understand that difference, so every sutra, every principle points to that direct perception. So now see the other part, you know, just, just to cover a brief and then we will continue. Uh, now we have a direct perception. So for the sake of communication, convenience, I see only for the sake of communication and language, interaction in the material world, I say you are Kate, you are there, and I am here. But internally, I experience constantly, consciously, that we both are essentially one.
timelessness in time, beyond the name and the form. So then if you say, Buddha is full of compassion, you are wrong. But it is in a language we say it, but otherwise you are wrong. Why you are wrong? When I see you, there is no difference between you and me, how can I hurt you? Huh? When the tongue is hurt by the teeth, you don't bring a hammer. I will teach you a lesson. So then there is an overflowing of that love because we are not two. How can you, how can your right hand hurt the left hand? No way. Why? Because we experience that oneness, one reality. And it comes by darshan. And that is why we use the word darshan. But every time, you should use the word philosophy, but keep in your mind that you are pointing something deeper. That is why I cover this uh, word darshan. <clears throat> yeah, let me pick up one more principle. Remember 4H. Do you know the Four Noble Truth? Of Buddhism? Four Noble Truth. There is a Dukkha, there is a suffering, yeah? There is a cause of the suffering. There is an absence of suffering and there is a method. Right? Right? Remember 4H. 4H coming from the Eastern wisdom which uh, Buddha has modified. So why I say 4H? You will find these four words frequently in Patanjali. So what is the first word? Heya. Heya means what is suffering. Hetu, what is the cause of the suffering? Han, what is the absence of suffering? Hanupaya. Viveka khyati viplava hanupaya in the second sutra. So what he says, when the mind lives in the highest state of discernment and dispassion, what happens? That is the method to bring an end to all the suffering. So I'm using the fourth word, fourth edge, Hanopayo. Here, what is suffering? He tu, what is the cause of the suffering? What is the absence of suffering is Han. So what is the method? Hanopayo. <clears throat> that this, these four principles are everywhere. Almost directly or indirectly, you will find in in majority of the text, including Patanjali. Uh, one I instantly remember: Vivek Khyatir Viplava Hanupaya. Hanupaya means method. Huh? So what is the method? He says, when the mind lives in the highest state of discernment and dispassion. That is the method. So what is discernment? <laughs> discernment in, yoga, in Eastern wisdom, we say viveka. And dispassion, we say, Averagya. Ah, 
Do you see this beard guy is different and separate from you? Obviously, you see that separation at the physical level. That is how you communicate. That is how you become the listener and I become the speaker. So that separation, uh, when our mind separates through knowledge and understanding, that is known as discernment. The word is used viveka by the Patanjali in the second chapter and also in the third chapter. He also uses frequently these words, you know, he uses frequently. Heyam dukham anagatam. <clears throat> Heyam. Heya he tu. Huh? Ah, in the second, that is the perhaps the sec, 16th sutra of the second chapter. Heyam dukham anagatam. What he is saying. Yoga can avoid or eliminate sorrow and the suffering in the future if you practice yoga. If you practice headstand for six hours, all your sorrows will come to an end. <laughs> no, it is important, but you know, I'm not saying it is not. But uh, you have to drop that wrong notion. Heyam dukham anagatam. It's a beautiful. You know, I when I sing it, you know, I say, oh, this is yoga. And what is the cause of all the suffering? We will take it a little deeper in our uh, next week. This Drashya Drashya Yo Sanyogo He Tu. What is the cause of the suffering? Cause of is identification. For you, when I my real when my mind identifies with the body and I suffer, when my mind identifies with huh? likes and dislikes, I suffer. When I build a strong ego, then I suffer. The reason for all the suffering is identification of the seer and the seen. Drashya drashya yo sanyogo he he tu. No? So, you know, I picked up these four words. That's why uh, you'll find many suttasya he turavidya. So now, what is the cause of all the suffering? We will take it in a little deeper. Today we are going in a lighter mode. So sutra number, uh, perhaps 24 or 25. So what is the cause of all the suffering? Tasya hetur avidya. The cause of identification is ignorance. You remove the ignorance and you live into that state of compassion, that state of peace, that state of happiness, which is already there. Ah, 24th, yeah. Second 20th, Tasya Hetur Avidya. And uh, pick up a little also, Hanam. So, Hanam, uh, Hanam Tad Bhavat. Sanyoga bhavo hanam, hanam, tad drashe kevalyam. So, even in defining and explaining the state of enlightenment, Patanjali is using hanam. Hanam means the absence, I told you. Tad bhavat sanyoga bhavo hanam, tad drashe kevalyam. The seen, seer and the seen are separated after the removal of ignorance, nirvana or kavalyam or enlightenment is at end. I will take it in a leap. So I'm just explaining how these four words are explained beautifully. You see now that that is lacking in the philosophy or darshan of Buddhism. Because they are not frequently, they have just explained, these are the four noble truths. And then what happens? People forget this four noble truths. 
and they say focus on the breath close your eyes mindfulness is done i am enlightened that is not the way of that is not the journey we have to follow step by step tad bhavat sanyogo i think 24th or 25 Mm, is there uh, maybe the sutra so understanding here here means what is suffering what is the cause of the what is the suffering first my honey is crazy and i start blaming my honey but i am suffering and my honey is enjoying a good sleep My honey is not aware that I am blaming and complaining. Do you see that? This is yoga psychology. Now you go to a psychiatrist. Okay. Your honey was sleeping when you are blaming. Oh, he has no, he's totally remorse, you know, he doesn't have any feeling. You have to think of divorce. I'm just citing an example. That, that is not only possible. Am dukham ya. Do you see that? So I'm pointing you, yoga is a study to study yourself. Simple ones. <laughs> I have to study myself. Why I'm not happy? With you or without you? In both the cases. Am I happy with you? Because with me, my mind is free from attachment and ignorance. I am happy without you because mind has no attachment. Ah, you asked me very ah, interesting questions. So now let me know if you have questions until now and then we will Take a break for 15 minutes before we will meet with the Gita. Oh, yeah, I have to give an introduction to Gita also. Yeah. So tell me if you have any question. I have a question, Grish. Yes. So... I've heard it said in some of uh, the study that I've had in the past in um, philosophy, <laughs> yoga philosophy, through yeah. yoga alliance, but in <laughs> right um, that uh, that actually to study from the first pada for most people doesn't make sense. That actually beginning the study in the second pada for most people, makes the sutras more accessible. Is that an accurate statement? 100% wrong statement. Because I'm not a seeker. <clears throat> you know, we have a proverb, Bandar kya jane adrak ka swad. So I'm going to translate into English. Monkey is there. So how the monkey can know the taste of a ginger. You see the proverb? So proverb means if I do not know the goal of yoga, the ultimate goal of yoga, then I skip the first pada. And then I get caught in. Uh, and it is in Hindi. The proverb is not in Sanskrit. I will write down. So you understand that? So, or you can say American proverb, ignorance is bliss. I suffer in that bliss. Or you can say a little knowledge is dangerous. Or you can say master of, no, jack of all trades, master of none.
ask our Dr. Fauci to study Patanjali Yoga Sutra. So Fauci will make a sense only in the second pada because there are some physical practices explained. See that. But if I do not understand clearly what exactly Patanjali is saying in the very first chapter, how can I move to the second chapter? I'm not saying from my own. It is all about huh? can the I ask, journey. Can yes. I ask about that? Okay, so I totally agree with what you're saying. I'm not. Um, however, sometimes if the mind is clouded or, you know, if there's a suffering that's um, that uh, ne not necessarily can be um, as accessed assessed or accessed by the brain um, or by, because there's suffering, there's knowledge is wrong. Can they access through the practice um, and then the continued practice of mindfulness or meditation as laid out? Um, yes. Understanding how the mindfulness is, what the mindfulness is, and then they should practice. You see that, uh, can the body demand consciously? Body is a matter. It is an unconscious entity. It is matter. So ultimately, we have to do anything first by knowledge that I covered yesterday. First is the knowledge. Mind has a desire, and body has action. Three entities, roughly you can say. So first, I must have a knowledge. Now, do I have a right knowledge or not? So that right knowledge is given by Patanjali. Now I have a right knowledge. The mind has a lot of desire, the right knowledge and the wrong desire. So now the intellect understands, so here is the problem. Blame, complain, game, I'm blaming even if the other is 100% wrong. But my mind is complaining, it means mind has a desire. I gotcha. But sometimes suffering is so acute that they can't access the mind. So my point... That is why, that is why we have modern psychology. That is why we have modern... <laughs> that is the simple answer. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I studied. I studied anxiety neurosis has fifty causes. Uh, it has on Vem MD, and the fifty second cause he the doctor says causes are unknown. Then why the hell you have written fifty one causes? My simple question is, <laughs> my simple question is simple. I'm not going against. It is helpful. It is remarkable. But when I'm a seeker, I have to find the ultimate cause. And now go to find the cause of a cancer. They will say die, this and that. And ultimately, they say causes are still unknown. No, hang on. One more question, though. Because sometimes suffering person into a place of surrender is that still uh the same you know and so then be they become a seeker only because the suffering is acute and their surrender is that the uh, matter as a seeker yes, if yes, yes. It comes we talk about uh, four types of seekers four types of seekers first who are suffering and they say, can I get a remedy? Come on, do practice of meditation. They did it. They did it. They found relaxation and they are gone. They throw the yoga once they are relaxed. So they approached yoga because they were suffering. Second level of the seeker, they want to benefit from it. They have a desire sense with the yoga, the second level. 
third level is academic let me understand i will never practice but now i understand yoga i am still suffering third level so they also do not change they are also not the right seekers and the fourth level they do not only want to know they want to practice they want to reach to the ultimate reality